So, full disclosure, I had started putting together a script about Zack Snyder's Justice League a couple of weeks ago. Just the intro to it, because I thought I knew what my opinion would be. Historically, I haven't really liked Snyder's filmography. I think his adaptation of Watchmen is a step down from the graphic novel, and I have an entire script in the works detailing my issues with 300. Snyder's DC movies I've considered... <coughs> ...flawed, at best. So I started the script fully expecting to not like Zack Snyder's Justice League. But... I... was wrong. Zack Snyder's Justice League is not just an improvement on 2017, a MASSIVE improvement, mind you. I'd argue it's a legitimately good superhero movie on its own. Snyder's worst impulses seem to be tempered in the one production he had the most control over. Sure, it's still self-indulgent at several parts, both in the biblical allusions again, and also some really strange slow motion shots. But honestly, it's not as prevalent or aggravating. And while I can stomach these elements I'm not fond of more easily, I feel like something finally does fall into place in this film. Zack Snyder's approach to the superhero genre has been based off the concept of these characters as modern mythology. Rather than humans ascending to heroic status like in Marvel, Snyder has wanted to look at people who are already titans connecting to humanity. That approach didn't really work for me in Watchmen, which is meant to be a more grounded story that's critical of the very idea of a superhero. In Man of Steel on Batman vs Superman, it started to fit a little better, and there are elements in those movies I really like. The execution just didn't land. The problem of, of evil in the world. Like seriously, Lex sounds like a freshman philosophy student. Come on, cut it out. But here, I think the modern mythology approach finally clicks. Now before I dig too much into this, let it be known I'm not going to judge these characters based on the similarity to the comics. I don't care what color Superman's suit is. I don't care if Batman's using a gun. I'm a fan of cinema, so I just care about what's on the screen. And that's all I want to judge the movie as. I also want to divorce this as much as possible from the Joss Whedon cut and keep those comparisons to a minimum. So with that said, I want to focus on the positives for a while. I really, really like these characters. The four hour long running time actually works wonders to lay out their stories. Everyone's share of that time feels balanced. They all get their opportunity to shine. They feel like they can use their strengths to cover the other's weaknesses. It's a dynamic that can be difficult to pull off, especially seeing how the 2017 cut makes Superman the only able-bodied character in the film. The Flash and Cyborg especially get the time they need, since they are first introduced in this movie. Ray Fisher as Cyborg is a real standout. My favorite scene in this whole movie was one where he taps into the internet, harnessing his full power for the first time, able to do virtually anything. And he sees a single mother struggling with poverty, taking pity on her, and he uses his power to help her. It's a powerful moment, which is weird because I don't normally note Snyder's films for their emotional resonance. People have been saying this film is boring, but I think the pace fits well. It establishes that each character has their own struggles while trying to be heroic in smaller ways than just saving the world. There are lots of small personal moments that had me invested, and this is where the movie is strongest. I like Cyborg taking the time to change the life of someone he doesn't know, without her even realizing he helped. I like The Flash saving someone in the middle of a job interview. I like Superman rediscovering his love for Earth after being resurrected. I can believe these are living myths who work miracles in the lives of people around them. And the story brings them together to face an existential threat that actually feels very intimidating. The villains aren't necessarily the most complex antagonist, but I feel it's similar to my thoughts on Ronan from Guardians of the Galaxy. He just needs to be a believable threat, and not an absolute joke. The story feels larger than life, painting a bombastic story of incredible feats. And if you're willing to go along for the ride, it's a worthwhile one. Now, is it a masterpiece? Well, n no. The movie is weakest when it reminds us that it's still part of a branded franchise. For example, did we really need Martian Manhunter to make a cameo? 
It makes this otherwise touching moment between Lois Lane and who we thought was Ma Kent suddenly evaporate. I'm sure it has something to do with Lois being the key, but we don't know what Martian's stake in all this even is. Him showing up at the ending provides few answers, as just a reminder that Warner Brothers wants to keep us coming back in perpetuity for the next installment of whatever the hell the DC Universe is becoming nowadays. For much the same reason, Jared Leto did not need to be in this movie. The nightmare sequence doesn't add anything here. When Cyborg sees the evil future just before they resurrect Superman, that helps to heighten the tension. We see more of what's at stake. When Bruce sees the evil future in the last 10 minutes of the movie, the climax already behind us, it just makes us begin to feel the full weight of the four hours. Similarly, the introduction of the anti-life equation, which is hidden on Earth and Darkseid wants to find, doesn't have much of a payoff in this movie. Obviously, I know they intend to pay it off later in the franchise, and it does provide a catalyst for Darkseid to actually get more personally involved, but it still feels underutilized here in proportion to how big a deal they make over it. But now Darkseid is coming to land on Earth and Justice League 2 or whatever is gonna happen. Again, the film is at its weakest when it reminds us it's a brand. But there's still a lot of good things packed into this movie that I think makes it worth watching. Yes, even worth watching at four hours long. Does it need all those four hours? Not really. It could have been trimmed down about 20 minutes and been stronger for it. But it clearly didn't deserve to be sliced down to two hours either. The worst thing I can say about it is that it's still messy, but I appreciate the ambition and heart running through the film. An ambition that, after eight years of DCEU, has finally gotten a worthwhile execution. I was a naysayer, but I have to admit when my naysaying was wrong, and this was one of those times. And god, it's been a while since I was so happy to be wrong.